You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? It's the ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. We would be honored if you would join us. What's going on, Star Wars fans and action figure collectors? We're jumping back probably about 12 months, actually, uh, for a figure that technically I haven't missed. I just didn't get it because I got it with the ATSD. Is the Klatuinian Raider. It is VC-266. He sort of came out around the time uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi was sort of airing. We started getting some of those figures and or um, I think I have reviewed all of these. Um... But yeah, this is one I don't think I've actually ever reviewed. I did review the ATST. I'm actually going to do it again for this channel. Um, I did the review for that back when I was doing Star Wars Go Figure podcast, and I reviewed it for that channel. Never got around to doing it for this one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a review on that because it's a it's a pretty damn cool item. I'm looking at it right there. It's over on the shelf. Um, yeah, so I thought we would take a look at this figure. I really like the card back. It's a nice sort of harken back to the old vintage Kenner ATST driver and like the ATAT driver where it showed the vehicle. I know they could pulled some shots of this guy from the show. Um, but yeah, we're going to take him out, take him out and have a look. Let's do that. All right. Here is the Klatuinian. Klatuinian. That's not an easy word to say. Klatuinian. Raider out of the packaging looking pretty good. I don't think there's too much difference between this one and the original version, except for maybe some weathering. I do have it right here, so we'll do a comparison at the end, but we'll take a look at what this guy comes with. Just simply his blaster pistol, which is the same type that Luke Skywalker um, steals in Jabba's palace, you know, when he gets threatened to get jumped down the, push down the Rancor pit, and he grabs one of the skiff guards or one of the guards' blasters, and that's, that's precisely what that is. Um, so we're going to just arm him up. Because that's pretty much all he's got accessory-wise. Now, my, my sort of my sort of main sort of gripe with this figure is it probably wasn't used to the best of its abilities in terms of creating something that's that you can mix and match and you can you know do a few different changes just to you know build not even army build just build a few of these goons, mix them up a little bit, do something different um, because. Let's be honest, we're all really only going to buy one of these at least if you didn't get the ATST. Probably didn't even need to do that. I only bought this because it was, you know, severely on special. <laughs> I wanted to talk about it too. It's, um, yeah, it's a figure that's obviously been in the collection for a little while. But it's, uh, it's pretty well done. So, you know, the paint apps are nice. The weathering's good. We'll get a look at the head sculpt and stuff because that's under the, under the hat. So again, that's pretty cool. So definitely, um, you know, it's very nicely sculpted, I'll, I'll say that. But, you know, if you wanted to, you could probably chuck one of these guys in your sail barge or your Jabba's Palace display, put him in the background and no one would be any other wiser. It's just it's a nice one to sort of fill some of those scenes. But you know, if you wanna if you wanna fill out a couple of guys from a couple of goons from that episode of Mandalorian, like I wanna put this guy up under the underneath the ATST with the other guy. Um, but I wanna change him up a little bit. I think probably one one gripe here is the blaster pistol is actually sculpted onto the onto the chest there, so you can't can't do much with that. Um, that's probably one thing that's kind of a little bit of a bummer. I do like the, the armor plates and all that. We'll get a look at that because it looks like that will come off. Um, but yeah, paint, paint's nice, nice and clean all over. A little bit of this sort of the edging there is sort of not colored, but eh, it is what it is. But yeah, nice, nice painted details throughout. Articulation-wise, pretty standard for the vintage collection. He's got 
a ball jointed head. This is still when they were doing the ball and sockets. I'm actually going to leave that off for the moment just because we're going to tr try some stuff here on the camera. Um, yeah, ball hinges in the shoulders. And that's, that's a nice tight joint. Probably not allowing a lot of movement just because of the, uh, the bulk, bulky shoulder. Not even the shoulder pad on top because that's sort of allowing a little bit of wriggle room. Um, but yeah, we've got ball hinge in the elbows. We have swivels in the wrists. We have a swivel in the torso, which is sort of impeded by all this sort of belts and straps and stuff. Uh, yeah, just swivel thighs. And I think this guy's actually borrowing parts from uh, the Weequay, the Weequay skiff guard. So I think that's what most of this figure underneath is. It's from the, the Weequay skiff guard. Which is fine. I don't mind them using parts. It's that's all good. Again, even more reason to fit him in. Um, yeah, swivels at the th swivels at the hips, ball hinges in the knees and ankles. So, yeah, sort of an older an older figure for the base, but it's not too bad. That that skiff guard was you know up until recently pretty highly sought after, and now they're not too difficult to find. So I just I actually want to see whether this will come off. You may need a little bit of off-camera work <laughs> to get this get this thing removed. There's no sort of obvious signs of joins. Like, you know, sometimes they come with like a peg on the belt. May, nah, maybe there is. But, but I dare say it's all sort of glued. Because there is a little bit of a a little bit of a separate part there. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can pry this off. There we go. So yeah, sort of simply just glued there. So that allows that removal. So then you've got, you know, already you have a guy that's it's different enough. If we go the other guy side by side, you know, there's some similarities there. But what I've actually got here is, you know, a range of accessories to try and change things. I've got some Ewok hats. You know, you can have that. you got ear holes. You have this one here, which I think was from Wicket. Which we pop his head off. Slip that on. Okay, that one doesn't quite fit as well, but you get the idea, sort of play around with a few different things, get him looking a little bit different. You know, never mind the, the big ear holes in there. Um, yeah, this is Sabine's satchel. If we can get that over his head. I just don't want to keep popping his head off. <laughs> I'll put it on the other side. No, that's wrong too. So yeah, you give him a satchel. You know, maybe he's carrying some, carrying some, some weaponry. Chuck this, this Ewok hat on. You know, it may maybe tempted to just to sort of glue that down, and then give him a couple of other weapons, which I think. I can't remember where this one was from. But, you know, it looks like a little bit more of a marauder with the with the knives, and this one came comes from Dexter Jetster, I think. Um, so already, you know, you've got a, a slightly different look for this guy. You know, I'm not going to use the bag. You know, it looks a little bit silly, but you get the idea. Just to sort of mix up. And I wish, yeah, that's sort of my point earlier on in the video where, you know, Hasbro could have could have jumped on that and given us, you know, just a little variation. I'm sure they could have pulled some different things from different places. Because this, this is a nice piece. But, you know, I think I might just leave this guy without it. As a little bit of a brute. Where's his actual headrest?
yeah, you can sort of see there just the colours are slightly different. So yeah, this new guy may end up just looking like this. Some different weapons. Yet to be decided. But um, yeah, stay tuned because I'm going to do... I'm going to take a look at the ATST on its own. Sort of had a little bit of a look at both these figures now. It's sort of, it's not really much to show with this comparison, just because he's really not that different. Maybe some paint improvements, but yeah, we'll take a look at the ATST. That will be up in the coming days. Um, but in the meantime. Clone Wars Thursday throwback and Power of the Force Fridays coming right up. Hope you enjoyed taking a look at this figure review. Got to do a peg test before I go. It stands right there. Guess we'll run. Guess we'll run action figure stands. And yeah, that's you know as I predicted, perfect. He ain't going anywhere. Get on those stands beautifully. So yeah, cool stuff. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Appreciate your time. We'll see you for another review very soon. Till then, may the force be with you always.